going to take a few minutes. Uh, this time last year, I stood here and uh, talked about our motto for 2009. You can see it up above the screen here. You can see it halfway down the hall as well. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. It's from 1 Peter 2, uh, verse 5. When we took this motto for last year, we felt that this motto was going to be for two years. So there's no new motto this year because we're having the same motto. Because we feel this is something that uh, over this two-year period that God wants to be working among us. Uh, so I want to say a couple of the things that I said last year to recap some of that. Uh, and then to say one or two other things as well. So let me read to you first of all, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him... You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe... The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you, you are a chosen people. You can say amen. amen. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people belonging to God. You can still say amen. It's okay. You know. I get excited every time I read those statements. A chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you would not received mercy but now you have received mercy. The background idea behind uh, these verses are two building projects. A building project done by men and a building project done by God. Human beings rejected Jesus, but he is the cornerstone of God's building. Which means that every other stone must take its line from him. That's how cornerstones work. Every other stone in the building takes its line from him. And this building, this church community, is now the place, as I've said already this evening, where heaven touches earth. It's the location for genuine worship, for spiritual sacrifices. We remind ourselves that uh, Christ is the key, as uh, Beer put it, Christ is the key to human destiny, the touchstone of all endeavour. Our response to Jesus, your response to Jesus, is the most important thing that you will ever, the most important response you will ever make in your life. You know, we do live in a, not just a multicultural and a multi-ethnic society, we live in a society that is now multi-faith. The New Testament was written in a multi-faith context and it created offence in that society that Christians said there is only one way to God. There is no other name under heaven by which, must, uh, by which a person can be saved except Jesus. And it's as true today as then. Yes, we respect people of other faith. We respect their beliefs, but we believe that Jesus is the only way. The salvation. It's the only name through whom we can find salvation. He is the only route to God. There is no other. Even if it's not politically correct to say it, it doesn't alter what is true. There is no other route. And we are described here as being a royal priesthood. Now, 
I just want to take a moment just to remind ourselves just how radical this teaching is. In Old Testament times, people like me and most of you, Gentiles, non-Jews, were not permitted to enter most of the temple. And only priests could enter the central parts. Now we all, you and me, whatever our ethnicity, whatever our background, as we trust in Jesus, we can all enter into the holiest place, right into God's presence. Isn't that an amazing thing? That right here today, whatever our background, whatever our context, we can enter into God's presence, right into his presence, into the holiest place. We're also a holy nation. We're made up here as a church, people from uh, 35, 40 different nationalities, even more ethnicities. And yet we're a holy nation because we actually share the same citizenship. Because we are citizens of the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. First and foremost, whatever it says in our passport, the most important citizenship we have is that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We share that together. Our motto focuses on the idea of living stones being built into a spiritual house. Living stones is a picture of Christians in the New Testament being built together into a spiritual house. And there are two key aspects to this. The first is bringing living stones to the house. It's about evangelism. It's about going out, as uh, some of the young people prayed so powerfully, about us going out and sharing the good news about Jesus. One of our strategic objectives as a church is to devise, develop, and maintain effective strategies for reaching every person in our local community with the good news that God loves and cares about them. But it isn't just something for the evangelist team. It's something for every one of us to be doing. If you're a part of this church, it's part of your responsibility to be telling people around you the good news about Jesus. Your next door neighbours, the people across the street, the people you meet at the school gate, the people that you work with, the people in your family, wherever you are, Whatever the context, we need to be telling people the good news that there is a God and that God cares about them, loves them and wants the best for them. We want to be seeing more and more people coming to faith in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And more this year than last year. <laughs> more people and more people coming to faith in Jesus. And we all need to be involved in that. Bringing living stones to the house. Also includes welcoming people who uh, are in the area, maybe newly in the area, maybe you've been in the area for a while, who are not part of a church family. They're Christians, but they are not joined in. We need to be welcoming them, seeing them joined in to the church family. And we need to see, secondly, those living stones built together. And that's about relationships. It's about discipleship. It's about ministry. You know, we have here a church building. Whether you like it or not, it's got its strong points, its weak points. It's a building. There's a big difference between a building and a pile of bricks. Down the end of my garden, I've got a pile of bricks. It's not a building. It's a pile of bricks. The difference between a building and a pile of bricks is that every single brick you look at in this building, look at a wall near you. Every brick you look at, God bless you, every brick you look at, it's joined to all the bricks around it. So what makes it a building. Every brick joined together. And if there is a brick that's not joined together, there's something wrong. And it's the same image for us as church. We need to be joined to one another. 
joined together. Every single person joined to other people in relationship, in discipleship, in ministry. We want to see people meeting together. Uh, We have got all sorts of meeting together groups. We've got house groups. We've also got these small meeting together groups. Groups of three people that meet together, to share together, to pray together, to read the Bible together. We want to see people being released in using the gifts and ministries that God has given them and seeing them released out into our community, reaching their full potential in God. I believe that in 2010 or 2010, call it whichever you like, that God intends for us to continue to grow numerically. But that also there should be no isolated bricks, no isolated individuals. It's not about accumulating numbers. It is about building a building. It is about being built together into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Unity, relationships, everyone dependent on others, interdependence. So as I come to the end of what I want to say this evening, I want to just peek back over 2009. I said some of this stuff at the start of the year, one year ago tonight. So as I look back on the year, how are we doing? Well, there are lots of things that are very difficult to measure. But there are some things that are quite easy to measure. So here are some numbers that are very easy to measure from last year. Since I stood here one year ago today, we welcomed 25 new members as a part of Green for Baptist Church. That's another year, the sixth consecutive year, when we've seen a 10% net growth in our church members. We thank God for that, for every one of those people that God has added to us. Over the year, we've seen eight people being baptized, coming to faith in God. During the year, we ran four Reaching Your Potential workshops. 26 different members came to those and entered a program of helping them reach their potential in God. We did a survey a few months ago. The bulk of our members are either in a meeting together group or in a discipleship group. So as I look back at 2009, I think it's been a year of good progress. It's a year when we've seen God at work among us, in us, and through us. But we've got a lot more progress to make. We have arrived at the end of this year... But we have got a lot to do in this new year that is coming. I believe, as I said just now, that God still wants to add more stones to us. I believe that God has given us a target that by October 2010, October 2010, we will see 200 people in membership of the church here. Let's believe it. Let's work towards it. We need to see people far more joined together, reaching their potential. I don't know about you, but I reckon I could go around and pick on anybody here. And if I said to you, have you reached all your potential in God, Richard? Richard would say? No. (laughs) Ola, have you reached all your potential in God? You need to speak. (laughs) (laughs) No. They can't see you shaking your head at the back. But God wants us all to reach our potential. Inside every one of us, God has placed gifts. God has put good things inside every one of us. Amen? Amen. And we want to see those gifts released more and more and more, reaching our potential in God. We're going to run more Reaching a Potential workshops this coming year. We're going to launch some new groups in early March. We've got a really exciting new initiative that we're going to launch Some of you will remember we had Professor Graham Bryant here a few years ago coming and doing a series on being God's apprentice. He has agreed to come and lead a group here that's going to begin in March. It's going to be an apprentice group helping you grow in your apprenticeship of Jesus using Bible meditation. We'll be launching it in the Sunday morning meeting on March the 14th and then the group will actually start on February the 14th. And the group will start in March. I'm really excited about that. 
Later in the year, we're going to launch another initiative called Realize. And it's going to take hold of people in our church family who we recognize God has put ministries inside. And those ministries are not yet being released. And we're going to pull people together. And I'm going to work with them, uh, along with the others in the team, but particularly me. And we're going to be doing some mentoring and working with them to help see those ministries realized in their lives. For them to realize the ministries, both what they've got and to see them worked out. We want to see a whole raft of ministries released within our church family here. Not for our benefit, for the benefit of the community, the benefit of the other churches in the area, benefit of our region, benefit even of our nation, benefit of other nations too. There's an awful lot that we need to be doing. But my time for speaking has finished. Let's stand together. I'm going to pray and then Andy's going to come and lead us in prayer. I want you to think for a moment. Just think back over 2009 in the context of the, the motto. And think about for you in this last year what the progress has been. Can you look back and see ways that you as a living stone are now more built together into the spiritual house, the royal priesthood, the holy nation. For those things that you can see as you look back, that you're in a different place this time now to this time last year, give thanks to God. But as you look and you see things that haven't yet happened, things that you look now and feel are shortcomings, Look into 2010 and say to God, help me. <laughs> help me connect. Help me see my potential realized. Help me see my ministry released. Father God, I thank you for everyone here who's a part of this church family. I thank you that you have brought us together. You've called us together with all our different gifts and ministries, huge variety of people from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of contexts that people have come from. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you have brought us together. Thank you that you have been releasing your potential in our lives. Thank you for all that's happened this year as we've taken steps to become more and more a part of the spiritual house. Father, thank you for all that's come. But Father, we want to thank you in advance for all that is going to come in this coming year as we take further steps forward together as individuals and as a church family to become more and more the people that you've created us to be, reaching our potential in you. In Jesus' name, amen.